Hey Metalheads and welcome to another review from Metal Academics. This time... The Sword! Never gets old. Never gets old because it's so cool and it's so metal. So many reasons to bring the sword into metal and reasons to bring metal into the sword. That doesn't make sense. But uh, the band that we're going to play today is the sword. One of my all time uh, favorites. Uh, wow. Yeah. And it was, um, for those who have been watching the channel, um, I mentioned before that uh, Falconer was one of my favorite bands yes. in college. It was Falconer and the sword. Uh, absolutely, those were the, the two, alongside Iron Maiden, Man of War. Blah, blah, the blah, classics. Blah. The classics. Um, and the reason I got into them, I think uh, Fred in, in one of the comments was saying that they discovered, um, who was it from Guitar Hero? Dragon Force. Dragon Force, yeah. yeah. For the Fire and Flames. So in Guitar Hero 2, uh, the first song uh -huh. I'm going to play, Freya. Um, I yes. discovered the sword through Guitar Hero, not, uh, not ashamed to admit it. Um, GH2. Yeah, I remember because, and I checked it, the Guitar Hero 2 came out in November 2006. That was my first year of college, and I was wrestling at the time, and we weren't allowed to go home for Christmas because oh, we had to stay and train. Oh, that's So terrible. we bought Guitar Hero for that December, and I was like, this song is awesome. And so we, we played it a ton, ton of times, um, and that led me to go, um, because their first album, the Age of Winters came out in 2006. So and all this is the first time I saw them together. play. I saw yeah. them play live in Malmö in 2006. In and it was obviously The Age of Winters because that was their first album. And it was obviously Freya that was the thing. And I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I was there together with a friend. And I think it was just like, wow. He, he, he said, like, Amory will surely love this one. I'm like, yeah, I have never heard of these young dudes. Blew my mind, blew yeah. my mind, and I love. They were very funny concert because nobody knew of them. They were so young mm. that uh, they were opening actually for another band that I didn't. I don't even remember who they were opening for because they stole the show. Yeah, they're they're so good. Uh, they're from Austin, Texas, so they're one of the few American uh, metal <laughs> bands. And I try to pair the whatever beer I'm drinking to the to the style of the band, and I thought Pabst Blue Ribbon would be a, uh, PBR would be a good one for a... Uh, Very American? Yeah, I, I, don't ask me what I paid for this in Sweden. Way more than it would be in the States. But um, let's hop right into the first song, Freya. You probably know it, um, but... And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you picked that one. Yeah, Obviously, almost actually, impossible not to I haven't do actually it. seen the video for it. So, uh, we, I haven't is, seen the video either. There is an official video. So let's hear Freya by The Sword. It comes off their uh, 2006 album, Age of Winters.
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some song. So I love good. it. I absolutely love it. So good. And I think... Um, nice video, too, by yeah. the way. I liked it. Yeah, a little bit old school, obviously, from uh, but this is 2006. Way, like, it's retro, retro metal, right? Yeah. Like, and of course, you can definitely hear, and anyone who's Googled the band knows this, is that you get a lot... They're, they're called doom metal. There's a lot of Black Sabbath influences. Doom? Yeah. Are they called... I, I, don't really like labels. Yeah, we don't Why like, is there it, so doom about well, this? Well, apparently doom metal okay. anyway. influences. Anyways, heavy riffs, uh, but it's good you brought up the labels because I'm not really into the, the labels so much either. But uh, you'll also, if you go reading about this band online, uh, it'll eventually pop up that they're classified as stoner metal or <laughs> stoner rock. Is that such a genre? Yeah, well, I mean, I, to an extent, I kind of agree with it. I, I, can, well, I can put and two what, and two. What would that be? I Just, mean, I, I'm not familiar with the labels. Kind of um, melodic, heavy. I mean, and that's the cool thing about The Sword, is especially in their first four albums, is you get this, this heavy sound that's... Even though it's so heavy, it's very easy to listen to. It's, um, in it's a melodic, sense, it's definitely. Kind of, it's kind of a little bit psychedelic, I, to an yeah. extent. You I guess this is what I, I would classify it as retro because they don't use a lot of the effects. In a sense, I would call it maybe lo-fi, like mm. purposefully lo-fi, the production. I don't know how to say it. Like yeah. The production, the way they, the, the instruments are being... Um, now I cannot remember what the English word. I am only remember the Swedish word, which is terrible. But the, the way they are arranged... It's lo-fi. They're not clean. Yeah. Definitely no and auto tune. Fits, you know what I mean? Yeah, like this it, is. It, it fits very well with the the lead singer. I don't know how you pronounce it. If it's John Cronice or Cronice, uh, I'm guessing Cronice. Um, mm -hmm. But he has a very kind of uh, monotonous sound that fits very well. I think with especially their earlier work, uh, which is all has this very heavy kind of in your face. Um, for me, the guitarist, Kyle uh, Shutt, really, yes. yeah, that guy. And you've seen him live. He yeah. just goes on these tangents. He's so talented. But um, I want to stick on this uh, stoner metal. Uh, stoner metal. I, I have to learn a new label yeah, today. It's, it's, it, and it's kind of, it's mostly, I haven't really seen it applied to other bands other than um, The Sword, maybe also Sleep and Deep Purple. You know who I know? Mm. I know a sweet, I mean, now that you mention, it's like a, a reminder. There's a Swedish band called The Graveyard. Mm. Have you heard of them? Mm -mm. Have you guys heard of The Graveyard? I think by by what you tell me, I hear it. And I think I, I, I've seen them play live as well. I, apparently I like Stoner, Stoner Metal because I've seen The Graveyard play. I think they're from Gothenburg. And they are similar to The Sword that they are slower, mm. heavier, and yeah, like n nothing too speedy. It's the opposite of speed in a sense. It's slow yeah. and rounded, rounded sounds. Yeah. Very melodic in its heaviness, I, yeah. I think. But uh, but I want to play a clip from an interview that I that I came across on yeah. YouTube where um, this guy in Australia uh, asks uh, the singer and the guitarist like, "What about the uh, the stoner metal label?" All right, and it's, uh, well, it's, you have the answer. Yeah, That's it's, cool. It's it's pretty interesting. I think from the horse's mouth. From the horse's mouth, uh, I think it's a pretty funny answer. So we'll just uh, kick kick that on. Um, but speaking of high country and your genre itself, it's it's honestly thrown around that your genre is stoner music, stoner metal. Even people have said doom metal. Do you guys agree with that? Were you no. aiming for that kind of thing? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, never. Rock music. Yeah, you know, before yeah. like when we started out, you know, I just called it heavy metal, and because it was heavy and it was metal, and now <laughs> it's you know kind of morphed into you know a heavy rock. Um, you know, but it's as far as this whole stoner tag people oh. throw around. I'm just, I gotta say, I'm pretty. You know, it's like you know, Willie Nelson's not called stoner country. <laughs> you know, Snoop Dogg's not called stoner rap. You know, it just seems silly to attach this tag to uh, to rock music for some reason. Um, you know, because it's, it's, it's just yeah. like a fashion thing almost. Yeah. Like it's like weeds, like. Right yeah, 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 sort of. Yeah, so, but of, you know, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, that, legal in the states. So that being yeah. said, you know, I guess there are certain hallmarks of this uh, sound that people uh, call that, and that's why we, you know, mm -hmm. this record we tried to kind of, um, you know, blur those lines and step outside that, and really not, you know, stick to that kind of formula because uh, that's that seems to be uh, that that those uh, those waters seem to be. Um, very heavily tread these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, we we. All right. So that's to, there. You heard it from the they, horse's mouth. Exactly. No <laughs> stoner label. No stoner metal. And they're talking about high country in this. Um, the album they're talking about. Yeah, and obviously mm -hmm. they're from Austin, Texas. So I think it was their fifth album, uh, High Country. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later, because I'm going to play a track from that. But. Um, uh -huh. 
Next. What can be next? We're going to go into uh, one of my favorites, which is How Heavy This Axe. Um, it comes off their second album. Let me just uh, double check the dates on that. Gods of the Earth, 2008. Uh, man, this might be, might be my favorite. Um, album or might song? Be, might be, the album in general. Um, so, so the basic thing about the sword is like their first four albums are this heavy stone or doom metal, but a similar sound um, in your face. And we'll talk a little bit about how they, how they kind of transitioned over to their, their uh, later sound. sound yeah. But uh, How Heavy This Axe, I love this song. I love on this album, The Sundering is probably the best opening for an album. Um, Personally, I think I really enjoy it. But How Heavy This Axe, they have a really, really cool music video that has a lot of this like retro kind of psychedelic yeah. feel, but uh, it was blocked by copyright. Americans, I tell Boom. you, they are um, so much into that. So what I did to kind of get around that, because I said, no, I will not sacrifice playing no. How Heavy This Axe. Uh, I have a, a, a live version that I put the studio track on top from um, Mexico City, uh -huh. Cuidad de uh, Mexico. Nice. Um, MXCD and the uh, Mexicans, man, they know how to jam. And so um, we'll listen, we'll watch the live version and we'll listen to the uh, studio track for How Heavy This X. It could go on, but it, it leads very well into the next song. Yeah, this is what I remember from that concert, that it was like a one one stream. Yeah. They did not interact with the public at all, which mm. is actually kind of funny because you think like the one who steals the show is most like crowd driven. No, these guys were in their own universe, not, not in it so much yeah. with the public. Nevertheless, again, stole the show then. And I can see here as well, like 
they're playing for the music. Yeah, not and for... we should mention, first of all, I love the fact that uh, lead singer is wearing a Rush shirt. I know this. Kinda, I kinda know this. Signals out to their kind of their their where they come from. Rock. Yeah, uh, love Rush. Um, but uh, also, it's worth mentioning, like these guys have they have one of the most intense touring schedules I've seen. I'm sure there's bands that tour more than them, but these guys tour like crazy. Um, I don't know how much they, they do it today, but um, they really, really tour a lot and they go to a lot of really smaller venues. And if you have a chance to see them, uh, they are yeah, incredible. Yeah, in Malmo, it was a very small, I mean, it was not the biggest venue yeah. at the time. I, they, they've been to Malmo twice. I haven't seen them in 2015. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't around, but... Um, they were both in in uh, both cases. They were like huge. There was like club venues, yeah. smaller venues. And I think also like just looking at where they've played. You know, coming from New Orleans, like they they play a lot in like Baton Rouge. They play in smaller cities that in smaller venues, which I think speaks a lot. And one of the reasons I like the band is that is they're clearly not. Um, you know, they're not necessarily going for the big time. I don't even think they would even want to play in an arena. And they kind of criticize that in that uh, the interview mm-hmm. as well. They're kind of like, look, we're, we're we play rock, <laughs> you know? And um, I always found them to be very authentic to their, um, to their music, to their style. And so the first four albums are very much like this. You yeah. just have it. I love it. I love that sound. Then they came out with High Country. I don't think, again, I'm familiar with the early phase, as you yeah. would call it, these Four, but I haven't listened so much to the post. And so high country, so you can kind of put in, you can imagine from from Texas, but Austin, which is its own thing, um, yeah. how that's, you can imagine how they would want to put kind of a, a country-ish elements. They uh-huh. put a lot of Southern rock, kind of like ZZ Top type of uh, influences. That's why they said Willie Nelson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's, and it's cool because, you know, we've been talking about like where are the, the American metal yeah. bands. And I mean... Uh, Obviously, they have, have to from, draw from... Uh, one from Utah. And yeah. then we're, uh, or we had Visigoth from Utah. Yeah. And who was the other one that we just did? Iced Earth Iced from Earth. Florida, Indiana. Florida, okay, so yeah, mid, Midwest, South. Um, but they draw inspiration from a lot of the Native Native American. Gotcha. Um, so I, I don't want to say that this is like a country type album. That's that's definitely not it. But um, it's a Texas album. <laughs> yeah, but, but Austin, uh, yeah. But particularly uh, Hipsterville. Um, but I think the uh, the cool part from what, when I was listening to that interview, what they were saying is that like we we wanted to change it up so that. <laughs> The, the effect of that album on their live performance is they could do more peaks and valleys, have more uh-huh. of a show rather yeah, than yeah. in your face all the time, uh, heavy metal, which um, is kind of cool. Yeah, so I picked a song, I wanted to pick a song off their, their, later, uh, their later work. And so we're gonna hear something off um, High Country. I just wanna double check that that's 100% right. Yeah, and it's, um, so this, this Album wasn't really well received uh, by critics, um, and I think that's... maybe they were expecting something like before. Yeah, but but going back to their idea of authenticity, they've, they've always been on independent labels, um, which I appreciate, and I appreciate their, you know, kind of branching out from from that the sound they've already clearly mastered in their yeah. first uh, four albums. There are a lot of songs I could have chosen from that, but uh, I'm gonna play a song that uh, I think is funky. <laughs> a word <laughs> that, that, you've uh, used that word before. I've, I've, I've used that word before, maybe correctly or not, but I think in this case it is correct. I'm gonna play a song off High Country called The Dream Thieves. The Dream Thieves. And this is really like, I could imagine, especially live playing, like being in a, a southern uh, rock venue, like this is this is kind of like, almost uh, jazz funk Ooh. mixed in with a bit of metal. So I, I love it. Um, and what I've done, they have a lyric video um, and I took the lyric video and I just kind of blended it with some live footage that isn't mm-hmm. totally synced up, but uh, it's a cool song. And it, and it kind of, I wanted to highlight a little bit of their different sound and... Um, Which year is this from? This is from, good question, 2015. So they they recently actually this year um, one of the 2020. reasons yeah they have they have a new album but it's it's as far as I know it's a lot of B sides and a lot of live uh, like yeah. demo versions of Freya yeah. and stuff so it'd be interesting to see what what comes out of them next or whether Although they're, they're kind quarantine. of done <laughs> yeah. kind of like quarantine exactly a lot, a lot of people have used this time to be very creative I've heard so many albums so many promises of albums so maybe the sword is gonna do it so next. so so let's hear uh, dream themes or dream thieves which is a totally different. Uh, uh, Dream Thieves. Totally I like different the name way to go. Already. Yeah.
So that's the Dream Thieves. I love it. I love it. Uh, again, I, I have said this maybe in some other video. I don't remember where in which context. But my entry point into um, metal music was actually through the rock of the 60s and 70s. And so this is like more up my alley than pretty much anything else, really. Yeah. So um, I love it. Uh, I don't think it's really country in that sense. Um, I, I hear you, but at the same time, it did not make me think of ZZ Top. More, it made me think of classic rock music of the of the 70s. Like, again, continuing to remind me of Black Sabbath, but Led Zeppelin would be definitely a reference. Mm. Not Greta Van Fleet uh, reference to Led <laughs> Zeppelin, which is like... Too much, maybe. Uh, well, but they, they did cover immigrant song. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so, I, I, um, for me, as, as a true Led Zepp fanatic, this is definitely inspired by that. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I so, mean, it brings, it modernizes it. Like, these people have listened to a lot of Led Zeppelin in their lifetimes. I think I can, I can say that much, um, and I think it's lovely to see it modernized and actualized and alive today. Yeah. I think it's really cool. I, I, I guess I just have a lot of respect for these guys because they, you know, because they could clearly just keep pumping out Freya type songs, but they chose another another avenue, and uh, it wasn't really met with super um, critical success. But I don't think they really care about that at the end of the day. Uh, that's my feeling. I could be wrong. But these guys, they, they tour around and they play great music. And, uh, I um, wish they came to Scandinavia again. I think they've been actually again a couple of times. So maybe once this hell is yeah, over. I remember they were playing in um, even Christiania in Copenhagen. They're, they're kind of that band. The you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so apart from the, the stoner metal. Actually, uh, there's some lady. excellent bands that have been playing in Christiania. Be, beyond yeah. the, 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 you know. Yeah, the definitely. But, uh, but, but I have a, I don't know. I, I give these guys like a certain... Uh, a certain level of street cred because they're not um, it, it, it doesn't seem to me anyways and I don't know the whole history of the band but it doesn't seem that they really uh, strove for like uh, Metallica stadium type fame like they, they're just kind of musicians that uh, are doing what they do <laughs> without uh, without uh, how was I say like focus on the commercial commercial yeah. end of and things. That's very un American, un American of Yeah, them. <laughs> and their choices, I think, their, their heavy touring schedule and their choices of, like, I think, very calculated to be on independent label that would let them do what they wanted to rather than selling music uh, works. I don't know how they got on Guitar Hero. Um, that might be a different, the other question. different impression, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I don't know. I've, I've seen these guys a few times live. Uh, and You've seen them also. Yeah, I've, I've seen them a few times in uh, New York and just... They killed it, and it was in their metal phase, and I love yeah. the metal stuff. Not a huge fan. Uh, I like the Dream Thieves, but uh, I think the critics are right, and um, there are some some misses on that album for sure. Um, but I hope that they keep going, because I would like to see, like, what is the next They always step. evolve. They're the I would like them to bent. come full circle and, and kind of bring those experiences back into the the heavy uh, kind of Viking-inspired inspired stuff. I really like it, and... Um thankful that you bring that band up because uh, I think more people should know about it yeah. definitely and, and uh, I think as uh, maybe you guys already know about it so if there's any uh, listener a viewer who already has seen them let us know where did you guys see them play live did you have the same impression as both of us apparently uh, um, have of, um, of their live concerts and did you discover them via Guitar Hero <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the, the best question to ask because uh, Guitar Hero it's um, that was cool for what like five years and then uh yeah who knows? i think people still play it really yeah i don't know i've seen a lot of guitars in thrift stores and stuff look at like that the... dragon force come yeah. on come yeah. on just just didn't we have a an episode on on dragon force where the gh addict it forever like guitar hero addict <laughs> basically beat Harmon lee at yeah, his own game that's the closest i'll get to playing guitar yeah. that's for sure <laughs> but uh did love the sword hope you guys liked it as well um, hit us up with some recommendations for bands that might be similar or bands that you want us to, uh, to feature. We're happy to, uh, to give them a listen and spotlight them on the channel. Thank you so much again for every other recommendation. But in the meantime, may your swords stay sharp. And your quest and in glory. Mm -hmm.